In Kabul, streets are full of life. Markets are busy and even amusement parks are open for visitors, including some bemused Taliban fighters. This street in the Afghan capital, Kabul, used to be closed for most Afghan citizens until recently. This is where the Afghan Ministry of Interior used to be and where the European Union's mission was also located. That meant that to get into the street, you had to pass several layers of security barriers. Those barriers have now been taken down as the Taliban try to convey a sense of normalcy in the capital. But the situation here is far from back to normal. The economy is on the verge of collapse and many Afghans say they don't know where the next paycheck is going to come from. And it's not just the economy. Women's freedoms are being taken away. The Taliban have banned teenage girls from going to school and reintroduced harsh Islamic punishments as they shot and then hung a group of alleged kidnappers in Herat. So in many ways, the reality on the ground here in Kabul is in contrast to the messages that the Taliban have been sending. Since the Taliban took control in August, fighters have been patrolling the streets, toting guns and manning checkpoints in Kabul. Their presence demonstrates military might but it's also a way for the Taliban to convey that Afghans are safe. But a recent spate of attacks is undermining that sense of security. In Kabul, a bomb exploded at a mosque in early October, leaving several citizens dead. No one immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. In other parts of the country, the Taliban have been struggling to contain the threat from Islamic State, which has said it was behind deadly roadside bombings. Both the Taliban and Islamic State want to impose strict Islamic rule on Afghanistan, but have deep religious and political differences. The Taliban have been trying to portray a moderate image, but on the ground they've reimposed harsh punishments, reminiscent of how they used to rule the country in the late 1990s. In the western city of Herat, the Taliban killed four men they accused of being kidnappers, then hung them from a public square. Many Afghans fear the Taliban's hardline rule, especially those who worry that it will threaten basic freedoms. Women in particular have borne the brunt of these new regulations. The Taliban initially said that it would allow women to attend school. But we've seen now that they've banned girls from attending secondary school and women have been sent home from offices. In many provinces of the country, women are no longer allowed to leave the house without a male relative uh, escorting them around the streets. Many Afghans fear that the Taliban will ban music like they did in the 1990s. Already many Afghans refrain from playing music in public and classes have stopped at the renowned National Institute of Music, which was home to the country's first all-female orchestra. <laughs> As they work out how to govern, the Taliban have been seeking to woo the international community and win diplomatic recognition. However, most countries have stopped short of officially recognizing the Taliban's government and have suspended aid. After the Taliban took control, the US, the IMF and other countries also froze Afghanistan's foreign currency reserves, which the country is heavily reliant on. And that's had a huge effect on the economy. There's a lack of cash and banks have put a strict limit on how much money people can withdraw. That means Afghans don't have enough money to buy the food that they're used to and they don't have enough money to basically keep the economy going. Before the Taliban came to power, nearly half the population lived in poverty. But it was rare to see scenes like this of Afghans struggling to find food or queuing up outside ATMs to withdraw cash. 
The UN has warned of growing starvation and pledged 1.2 billion in emergency aid. Many people who work for the former government have lost their jobs. Unemployment is soaring and at the same time, prices of food and fuel are rising. And Afghans are worried that the coming winter is going to be a struggle.